What would you do if you had the ability to make an unstoppable missile? A hypersonic missile. Would you make it? How would you use it? As a deterrent? As a form of aggression? Would it make the world a safer place, or would it bring the world a step closer to war? In April of 2022, the UK signed an agreement with Australia and the USA, known as the AUKUS Security Agreement, which binded these three states to developing hypersonic missiles and counter-hypersonic defences. Now, in this video, we're going to be breaking down a more recent report from the UK's Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology to understand what all the fuss is about hypersonic missiles, which of the world's superpowers are leading the race in developing them, and whether they truly Truly pose such a great threat to the world as some analysts think. What are hypersonic missiles, and who's even in the race to developing them? Primarily, it's important to establish the differences between hypersonic missiles and regular ballistic missiles. Ballistic missiles get their name because they have parabolic or ballistic trajectories. They look like one big arch. Meanwhile, Hypersonic Missiles is a Sam Fender song. They're not just that, they're a very real weapon in global development. Hypersonic Missiles can travel at over five times the speed of sound, five, and they can do this for extended periods of time, whilst, crucially, remaining extremely manoeuvrable and accurate. What sets them apart from ballistic missiles and intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, is that they actually stay within the Earth's atmosphere for the majority of their flight time, unlike ballistic missiles which will leave the atmosphere and then return. It means that whilst the flight paths of ballistic missiles might look like this, the flight paths of hypersonic missiles might look more like this. This makes them harder to detect, predict, and therefore harder to defend. The main countries in the race to develop them are China, Russia, and the United States of America. Now one major example has come out of Russia, the Russian Kinzhal missile. The Kinzhal is an aeroballistic missile, and in this case can travel up to Mach 10, so that's 10 times the speed of sound, and has a range of 2,000 kilometers. They have a quasi-ballistic trajectory and are capable of some limited maneuvers. Kinzhal loosely translates to dagger, and that is exactly what is being used for in Ukraine, to punch through defenses and cause traumatic damage. Other missile development programs include the Chinese DFZF missile, which is capable of medium distances and delivering both nuclear and ballistic capabilities, and the USA has its conventional prompt strike program. What are the potential uses, and what are the limitations? Missiles aren't a commercial use, they're for the military sector of a given government. Hypersonic missiles can specifically be used for the rapid striking of mobile assets long-range precision strikes, and to enhance nuclear deterrence, as they can be equipped with both nuclear and ballistic capabilities. Therefore, it's no surprise that countries are in a rush to develop them, and also to develop defensive capabilities to defend against them. Now, at present, the UK is currently very behind on the development of hypersonic missiles, and so there are suggestions that it should be focusing on defense instead. That said, if it did want to focus on the development, then there are two types of missiles that it could consider developing hypersonic glide vehicles, HGVs, and hypersonic cruise missiles, HCMs. HGVs are mounted to rockets, often ICBMs, and then left to glide in the atmosphere, usually around 30 to 80 kilometers up. In comparison, HCMs fly solo at flatter trajectories to avoid detection, and they rely on scramjet engines to reach hypersonic speeds. This flatter arc is how they achieve one of their main intended goals. As the government states, hypersonic missiles are designed to evade existing ballistic defenses. They fly at lower altitudes than ballistic missiles, and their significant maneuverability enables them to change trajectory during flight, making their flight path and target difficult to predict. However, development costs time, money, and effort, and there are many major issues with the research. Hypersonic flight creates massive air resistance, superheating the air to thousands of degrees Celsius. Therefore, the missiles themselves require heat-resistant materials like ceramics, as well as thermal protections for the fuel, electronics, and warhead. Furthermore, their scramjet engines are incredibly intricate and really difficult to make work effectively. They require mixing fuel with superheated air traveling at hypersonic speeds, requiring timings to be perfect down to the millisecond. In fact, experts describe keeping scramjet combustion going like keeping a match lit in a hurricane. Another limitation to the creation of hypersonic missiles is the formation of plasma clouds. Clouds of electrically charged particles which are formed by the high temperatures at hypersonic flight. 
These plasma clouds are a problem because they can interfere with guidance and communication systems. Barely important things when you have a missile in the air. Let's switch gears for a moment though and talk about defense. Current missile defense systems exist on three main elements. The first of these is detection, with a multitude of different sensors, including satellites, being used to identify threats, be it through infrared or surface-based radar. Second step is threat validation, where the information gathered by the sensors is sent to a central command center for analysis. If the threat is validated, you then move to the third step, an interceptor missile sent up to collide with the incoming threat. Now, rather than an interception missile, there are some other particularly novel ideas which might be able to take advantage of the weaknesses of hypersonic flight. One option would be to throw up a cloud of particles or debris to destabilize or damage the missile's electronics. Another option would be to defensively use a directed energy weapon like a laser, which might sound like something out of science fiction, but is actually in development, including here in the UK. But these are just looking at the response steps. The key thing to increasing missile defense is increasing the warning and response time. Remember, even late interception or partial interception can still lead to debris, which could cause damage over populated areas. So all of this taken together from the difficulty of developing hypersonic weapons to the defenses which exist to beat them, how big of a threat do they actually pose to global peace? Some analysts argue that the threat that they pose to global security has been overblown. Hypersonic missiles might just be slightly more dangerous than nuclear weapons. However, they are a form of escalation unseen since the Cold War, and they could pose a threat to the delicate balance of power which has been in place since nuclear weapons mutually assured destruction. In fact, there are three major reasons to why hypersonic missiles could disrupt the balance of power. The first of these is target ambiguity surrounding these missiles, with the sheer speed of the technology reducing the amount of time that states have to respond to the threats. A 2017 analysis by the RAND Corporation states that hypersonic technology could increase unnecessary escalation as states become trigger happy. The second issue is that it isn't obvious whether a hypersonic warhead is atomic or conventional. Again, this could risk further escalation as states may launch nuclear weapons in response to non-nuclear but hypersonic threats. And finally, hypersonic missiles are so capable of precision strikes that they could be used to destroy the nuclear reserves of states, the result of which would be the balance of power becoming one-sided. Fundamentally, at the current point of research and development, hypersonic missiles do pose a threat to global stability. The major reason for this is that the countries which are furthest ahead in the race to develop them are also among the countries which pose the biggest threat to global peace. American reactionary responses and Russian posturing give these weapons their threat potential. Plus, the tech themselves is advanced. The ability to maneuver well at hypersonic speeds, as well as the limited defenses, make them a very real military threat. However, the technology is still in its infancy and poses no greater threat than ballistic or nuclear missiles. Right now, they're no worse. No worse. Thanks for watching this episode of Science Fairs. If you found it interesting, then the best way to support the show is to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring the notification bell so you know when the next video is released. We hope to see you in the next one.